happy morning everybody and a great evening and afternoon hi kartikeyan sir hello good morning yes sir good morning how are you i will be watching you carry on okay okay sure yeah. sir yes sir thank you sir thank you you carry thank on. you for the introduction sure thank you thanks for letting me know that thank all that bye. okay sir yeah bye bye karambanath ji so where are you from sir where are you dialing from I can't hear you. What did you say? Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. Oh, not able to follow, sir. Okay. From Zurich. From Zurich. Yeah. Okay. The voice is breaking. If you were to talk, uh, are rather not clear. <coughs> okay. That's that's great to hear. What time is it there? Six. Five past seven. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for joining. That's great to see. I recommend that or or referred by Mr. S. B. Balasubramanian, who is the best friend of mine. Okay, so so through S. B. B. Sir, yes. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. So you live there, sir? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for joining, sir. That's great. Hi, um, sir. How are you enjoying the sessions so far? Very, very interesting, and uh, it's the first time. And um, are you able to hear me? Yes, it's not that clear. We are struggling to hear this. Maybe if you come closer, we might be able to hear you. Uh, I don't know where uh, the microphone is not working here. I don't know exactly. Um, Anyhow, I'll try. Huh? <laughs> I, I I find it very interesting, and uh, it's the first time. Uh, I'd like to continue for some more time, and then I will be able to give you your feedback. Yeah. Okay, sir. That's great. Thank you. So yesterday, we're talking about how meditation is fundamentally. altering our body and neurologically neurophysiologically biologically so that we gain all our health that thing called stress which is keeping our health away is completely and will be completely removed through meditation one of the main reasons why people gain immediate immediate benefit of health through meditation is we understood when we understand some science are the reason behind why what happens then it becomes easy if we carry that negative thought which is interfering in the functioning of the body anything that's anything that becomes a temperament anything that becomes we brood over the same thing again and again anything that is causing anything that's negative is in in, in principle has a stress causing issue and then we're making the body into that fight and flight mode that's the key that's the word fight and flight mode and meditation is bringing us out of that fight and flight mode then sleep and before sleep i talked about this heart they were discovered in the year 1993 or so somewhere that time there is our heart as a brain called a heart brain it has more than 40000 neural cells and neural cells compared to the brain it's very small but however it's doing a very important function so this heart brain is independently able to function taking care of of course the blood supply but in addition there is a gland behind this uh, thing called thymus gland just right behind the heart thymus gland they are very connected in our body immunity the antibodies in the t cells essentially in order to produce in order to have a lot of immunity one of the core components is t cells and that cells are produced abundantly through this gland through this gland hey can you mute all through this gland 
Somebody has to be alert. One of the co facilitators be alert. Somebody has to be alert. So this body, the thymus gland, which is right behind the heart center, is producing one of the core important immune, immune cells called T cells, which have a function of killing, apart from many functions, have a function of killing all those foreign bodies that come in. It's an amazing science to understand how this whole immunity system is working. They have support systems, then something that marks off on the cells, which is a foreign body, so that you know, there another workforce will go and then start killing them, anything that's marked as a foreign body. But needless, we don't have to go into that, but then their immunity system requires these T cells and then they are produced primarily only through this thymus gland. They're created in the bone marrow as stem cells. You know, body has something called stem cells, which are the cells which can be produced for anything. If we have time, we'll understand how meditation helps us express new protein and hence you know, new kind of the, the stem cells transform into something more useful into our daily life based on our thought feelings are. <clears throat> but the stem cells that are common cells and then they'll get transformed into various cells like skin cells or, you know, or T cells, antibodies or neurons, whatever that maybe that's required, it transforms into that wherever the bodies require supply. <clears throat> So some cells, the core, they get created in the bone marrow, they come into the thymus to get prepared as T cells for immunity. So every time we are going into an anxious mode, <clears throat> every time you're going to a stressful mode, every time you're going to a fearful mode, angry mode, guilty mode, Frustration mode, tell you what, we are impacting our ability, our heart to beat normally. And every time we do that, every time we are doing a bit of disservice to ourselves in disengaging some of this system that is connected with this heart brain. <clears throat> that heart brain, which is sort of regulating the functioning to an extent of this uh, thymus gland too, we are doing disservice by disengaging some of it. There is an institute called Heart Math Institute. It's called Heart Math Institute. It's based out of California. They're doing a lot of research on this part. Wonderful research. So this heart, which is primary function of producing emotion, reflecting that emotion that is being driven through this fear center amygdala from the brain, and when it comes there, then we are disengaging a part of our immunity system. And which immunity system is something that T cells, primarily, as far as I know, they are the only gland which produce all the T cells. Maybe there are functions are there, but that is primary, primary. And then that gets started getting disengaged. So what do we, guess what? Then we have lesser T cells. So that means we have lesser immunity to invade the foreign bodies. Meditators who are disengaging from this good and not so good emotions, unsupportive emotions are helping the heart to beat normally. That's all. We're all asking the, the let the body function normally. That's all it is. So they're helping the heart to beat normally. Avoid those stress responses and help them not normally. And as a result, then you're producing tons of this T cells more naturally. And so you have more immunity. That's one of the reasons why meditators can and first they do not get something, but that if they get something, they have this heightened immunity to heal themselves much faster. Recovery is much faster. I used to have cold year round. Every two weeks, 10 days, I used to have like serious cold. Sneezing, 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 and I just used it like a part of my life. But after meditation, I do get it once in three, four months, and I take it as a Indication that I have to just sit down and rest and then sort of sit back and then relax if I'm also running, running, running. But otherwise, uh, not once in three months, maybe once in a year is oh, um, the frequency I've noticed these days. But it's gone. 
thing that used to bother heavy heavy cold dripping and the sneezing and then all the time but you have to work as you grow in a career you got to work you got to still show up for the meetings you got to still be, be present your best version to the uh, colleagues and people it gets tougher isn't it so that immunity increases significantly that's why meditators are not worried about covid i can tell you that much they are not worried about covid on one side we have a total understanding that we will build it up and then we can absolutely fight it through any kind of stuff if it's required but then there are several higher reasons of it one that but there are other reasons that a will you really get to contract once you understand the purpose and then you live with your purpose we are here for a purpose we all have a purpose and then as long as you fulfill a purpose we got to be here for a purpose and we got to be here it's not a mere physical thing so that's a different topic but we know that immunity improves significantly and we can absolutely stay healthy radiantly healthy yeah heart math institute just go in and search for heart math institute there's nothing more i can say it's there heart math institute just put it in google then you'll get to know everything about it please so this meditation that we practice in dear friends first and foremost is helping us to be totally coherent in our heart making the heart beat normally no fast slow high and low is helping us beat normally and as it's helping us beat the heart normally and then yesterday and several participants will see and including bala sundaram ji said my heart beat is slowing down you know when if you have a slower heart beat then you have obviously more effective system right it has to pump number of times it has to beat lesser to pump the same amount of blood it has to beat lesser that means it is in longevity is increasing from 72 if the sports people have 60 60 in some with some people have even lesser that means you do less work to do more blood circulation right that's what it means which is good which is good one of the anti aging things is that meditation is helping to be anti aging there is a fountain of youth chemical that also comes from the thymus gland again it's called fountain of youth it comes from the thymus gland so it's sort of helping us become more younger the skin starts glowing so many people have said hey people are telling me that i'm becoming anti aging anger skin start glowing one is physically but the anti aging is also there in uh, brain where your memory also has to come right and our body is not sufficient we also have to feel that your memory is there to support your life and we'll understand that after meditation today how meditation is helping us improve not one not to seven memory pass dear friends if this meditation that breath mindfulness meditation anapanasati meditation is helping us beat our heart normally and then helping us experience that emotion normally and then build that immunity so that we stay so radiantly healthy shall we then go in once again into that meditation our goal is to empty our mind our goal is to be with our breath let's give our best today once again the best that now we are not thinking about anything about my environment be fully present here forget for a moment whatever that you may have i am sure all of us have stuff to do as soon as we finish this stay keep it away you say hey i am here for my purpose is for myself make that resolution make that commitment as you go into the meditation and say i am going to be totally 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 thoughtless today i am connecting i am giving my best to become empty be with my breath as much as possible give your best make that commitment make that intent you know in life a lot of times we make things happen just by making a affirmation to ourselves we first we have to decide we have to decide with no uncertainty and no doubt there are two things of course fear is the third one fear uncertainty and doubt but everything is doubt this is very tough this is uh, i i am i am so full i don't think i can get in there chandra is saying something but it is tough it, i i don't think i can get there yesterday was horrible so i don't know whether it will be like that only people say doubt 
this doubt is one half the time stops us from going forward. Thoughts create reality. So the doubt, I have to take, you know, the doubt mind has to be completely out. Of course, it comes with practice. So remove the doubt from the mind and say, it is for me, I'm going in. Why not? Anyway, we are here together. Let's experiment it, friends. Go with full confidence, full faith. Katsikins has said in the first day, Long ago, Patriji told me, it is very unscientific if you say, oh, meditation is not for me. Or this uh, curry, I don't like it. If you don't even try. Oh, math is very difficult. If you don't even try and say that, no, it is not for me, it doesn't make sense, right? Can, does it make sense? Is it scientific? When we don't try, experiment it, and then say it is not for me, we've got to experiment. We've got to give it enough time. And then they said, that's very scientifically thinking about it. Not knowing and then saying just because somebody said it. Of course, we got to be an authoritative voice to say if you believe in. But otherwise, it's best is to I recognize that we've got to experiment. I always said, including Gautam Buddha said this, this is my path. Don't believe me, absolutely. Experiment yourself. If you like it, keep it. Otherwise, just move on. So that's what we're doing, friends. We're experimenting, right? So relax yourself. We'll go into that meditation once again. Those of you new joined, we are doing breath mindfulness meditation, which is observing our normal, natural in-breath and out-breath. No manipulation of our breath. We want to observe the normal, natural breath. We do this by three things. We sit comfortably in your chair or on the floor, cross your feet at ankles, fingers into fingers, like this, and rest your hands comfortably in your lap. You close your eyes. If you wear specs, remove the specs. So you close your eyes. So closing eyes, fingers into fingers, resting them on the lap, and then crossing the feet at ankle. Three things we do. If you're sitting on the floor, then you know, you're cross-feeted, right? You're doing cross-feeted. Padmasana is not required. Spine erection not required. One, posture. Then the process is simply closing your eyes and observing that breath. Take any point in your nose and then observe that Air is going in, coming out. Anywhere you put your attention, then you'll find that air is going in, coming out. Most people can observe. Some people say, sir, I have a problem in observing the breath is there. No problem. Just put your focus on some part of the nose and then be there. If you're not sensitive enough, it's okay, no problem. Just be there and then be point to that and see, and then slowly you might be able to find your breath, right? Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. As you're observing, the thoughts will come, so your breath, your attention will go off to thoughts. Your job at hand in this next few minutes is to be observing the breath. So bring attention back to the breath again, observe. And as you're observing for a little long enough, the breath becomes slowly shorter, lighter. In a few seconds, it'll become shorter, lighter, shorter, shorter, lighter. Again, for some people, they can't experience that. It's so okay, so just continue to observe the breath. And as you're doing that, there'll be a point where it'll become so non-existent that that's the time you become totally empty. Our goal of the meditation is to empty our mind. Our mind has 70, 60, 70, 70, 80,000 thoughts, depending on some people have 90,000 thoughts a day. If you're very anxious, if you're very worrisome, you have 90,000 thoughts. Stressful. So our goal is to empty the mind as much as possible and then bring those thousands of thoughts into a few hundreds, hundreds, hundreds and become zero. In meditation, you want to bring it to zero. It will not happen. The whole duration will never happen for any, any people, rare exceptions. We'll be in thoughts, we'll come back with the breath. But when the breath is, we have, when we are with the breath for even a few seconds, then we are going into an empty state quickly and coming out, empty state coming out. With the practice, will increase. That empty state duration will increase slowly, slowly, slowly. Whether it's for a short time or longer time, we still have a lot of benefit. So don't be harsh on yourself if you're thinking and you feel like all the time you're thinking because that's how we feel. Don't be harsh and then simply come back to observing the breath. So while you're observing the breath, many things may happen in our body, we might experience several things. Be a witness to it. Be a sakshi, observer. That means non-interpretation. Do not interpret what you're experiencing. Just be an observer and see. So just be with it. Whatever that you're seeing as a picture, whatever that you're experiencing, whatever you're feeling, just see it. Non-interpretation. We understand non-interpretation, right? Right now, I am speaking, if you're interpreting based on what you knew in the past, then that's called interpretation then you are probably not listening to my words fully because you're half here, half somewhere else where your brain is pulling. Instead, you are fully there with me, then you're not interpreting, right? And then you're taking it. When I said Heart Math Institute, then you say, oh, California, who is there? Can somebody help me? That's interpretation. 
take it and then you can afterwards write it down and then ask questions and things like that right all right so do not interpret do not interpret any experience that we come it's called non judgmental awareness all right that also comes with practice nothing comes so every okay dear friends so we are doing that technique and then before that for the newcomers we are doing something called heart elevation process where we cross our feet sit comfortably same posture keeping eyes closed same fingers instead here initially we're going to keep our hands on our chest area single hand is fine do two hands are fine right keep your hands on our chest area and then our goal there is to feel in a heightened emotion of like love gratitude compassion appreciation joy adventure bliss care kindness any of these emotions where it helps you to connect with somebody else anything that connects you with somebody else some animal some nature connecting with somebody that is a heightened emotions means these are positive emotions with a lot of energy in them high frequency emotions which help us connect into the empty state faster and which help us also of course connect into that emptiness that we see all around so we do that for a few minutes active active mind process this is whereas the anapanasati breath mindfulness meditation is no mind process we want to avoid we want to empty the mind here we are with the mind we are actively visualizing some things as per my guidance just use my guidance and then go into that process as much right the meditation is to empty the mind and according to quantum physics we are 99.99% energy and then only 0% 0.01% matter so in meditation we empty our mind and when we empty the mind slowly 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 we are experiencing energy right we will understand this more in the next two days so relax yourself sit comfortably i'm playing good music and your job and i also be guiding during this process and your job is to observe the breath okay when we meditate we are going into that unknown unpredictable unlimited suppose we are going into himalayas himalayas is vast those mountain ranges are huge humongous they are gigantic what we know about that himalayas is so little <clears throat> of course we plan but we go there but then every when we go there we go with a plan a little bit of plan and often times with the analytical mind we make it very predictable oh i need to go and see this spot that manasa devi temple this uh, vashishta caves that uh, the parmat the niketan we have these spots you want to go and then tick off and then be there but however when you go in with an open mind you start finding many 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 interesting spots there if you are making it predictable your attention goes only that you find but when you go in an adventure where you don't know where because the place is like that himalayas has so many beautiful spots you suddenly stop by and there is a beautiful sangamam out there just there is not advertised anywhere but then you stop by there an amazing beauty you see a place where there's a beautiful ganges out there you go down then you'll find a cave out of nowhere a cave where somebody would have been meditated for so much that so much energy is oozing out of that this place that emptiness that we go in it's up to us to make it predictable and unpredictable it is an unpredictable feel if we want it to be that way so we got to stay away from any analytical thinking inside these meditations so is the case with life we got to stay open as much as possible so it's unknown first is we don't know many things about it we are only body 0.01% mass so much we are only energy point we are only mass 0.01% everything else is energy so we know little about this material reality and the material reality is so little that everything else is so much that we know little about this energy so it's unknown it's unpredictable because the probabilities happen any time 
It's an unlimited, just like the Himalayas when you go in, it's an unlimited vast field. You can explore any amount of it. And the more you explore, the more we receive it. Anybody on the path of spirituality must, I say, see when you get an opportunity to go into these beautiful mountains. I only went about four years ago and then I decided that I got to go every year. So beautiful. All, mind, all mountains are condensed energy. So there's a lot of energy. Why many yogis, rishis made mountains as their places where they actually meditate and practice and practice. A high form of energy. So these infinite possibilities are open to it. And we don't make it predictable. Then we start seeing synchronicities. We start seeing some messages. We got to be open. When you are doing that cooking, when you start meditating, dear friends, when you start doing cooking, and suddenly some, some unexpected idea, person come to your mind. Now being more aware, do not brush it aside and say, okay, something are irrelevant. Pay attention to that. And you will pay attention because we are becoming more open. We don't make it analytical, so automatically you'll pay attention and say, why is this person coming to my mind right now? Maybe because you wanted a solution for a business thing and then that person is the one who is got to be, you go and meet. These things will happen. Messages will come, insights will come when you are becoming unpredictable and then open to the possibility. So I'd like to hear some experience from anybody. So meditate for about 45 minutes today. Right, you get the rhythm, so it's pretty easy. I hope today's meditation is easier compared to the first day. For many of you being started just the journey. And I'd like to share your experience. How did you feel? Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Abhishek this side. Actually, this is the second day of my meditation. So, my, let me just switch on the light so that you can, you guys can see me. It's the second day of my meditation. I missed yesterday class. And it was all wonderful just to thank you. It means I have seen like clouds, moons, and the bright moon going inside the cloud. And I have all sorts of feelings running through my mind. It means the heaviness is like a radiation, burning sensation. I don't know how I felt it. It is just second day. It means I just can was able to control my mind it means i was just staying focused on this breathing and breathe out technology and all this it means it was really means too good for me it's just a second day i'm doing a meditation means... wonderful wonderful uh, uh abhishek ji that's great when you're so... sincerely approaching into it meditation is always giving back something to us it was all kind of feelings uh, like shivering like the heaviness in my palm like burning sensation means I don't know how come I felt everything means means I don't know what kind of uh, these things is coming means, is there any message which is coming to me or something like that it only means um, Abhishek yes you are going deep inside you are sincerely putting everything aside and then you're into it so it's fine the experiences are it doesn't necessarily mean that those who did not experience did not have anything I just want to make sure we clarify right but um, it means that you are experiencing out of the body to so understand that the body is one thing, but there is so much that we don't know, but we experience all of it. And every experience that is an energy experience. You are touching into the portals of that quantum field on the other side. You're becoming empty. And so you're touching on the other side. So you're experiencing because slowly as you experience, then you may intensify into more visions, more clarity more things that will happen, right? That's one. And that's true, it's also making you believe that there is something more than this wakeful reality that you are into. So that's that's uh, how it is. And the third thing is that it oftentimes when we are doing this deep feeling, some kind of body, specific body stuff, then we're also healing ourselves. Known, unknown. A body is healing itself of the known and unknown uh, of anything that uh, are existing or may exist. Okay. okay. All of Thank possible. you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. It was wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Riling the children. Hello. Yes. Yeah. It's a good experience where I experienced many thoughts were coming and going 
all different types of thoughts and then the mind was very much relaxed and then even i went to sleep then again i came back and i was in a state at a different place and i was completely relaxed and full of energy it is very peaceful i experienced peacefulness today very good so you said i went to sleep yeah you are certain actually for uh, some 5 to 10 seconds i felt that i went to sleep then i again came back but you are certain that you went to sleep yeah i was okay right many times we think we sleep and a lot of times we don't okay, in meditation was not then in meditation many of times when basically what is sleep for us if we didn't know and then there is a start time and end time later suddenly we come up and then we say hey what happened after 5 minutes or over 10 minutes or over the only thing we know in a to be in state like that is sleep when we close our eyes right that's the analytical as what we think so we associate with sleep but guess what many people are not going into sleep they're going to the trance state okay in meditation they go into a trance state and they come out of the trance state this usually so, happens i just want to understand it does happen it is a common thing that's what i'm trying to say there is a common state where we associate with sleep but we go into a trance state where we are not aware of ourselves we are empty and we are in that state and then after a while we come out, come back and say that's why sometimes a meditation many people are also experiencing right that now you you sit for a long time but then you realize that if it's only 10 minutes if it's already 40 minutes you only sat for 5 10 minutes is because it goes fast we transcend time it goes fast when we are in the trance state we transcend time okay it is a good experience because after doing this your whole day is fully energized you don't feel tired there is a different type of energy in you i really like this and thank you so much to you there you go those are the words when you like it you do more of it and you enjoy yeah. it so that's a process to enjoy wonderful yeah and i'm sure that i will follow this throughout throughout my life all right okay great inspiration thank you rilo next one yes yeah. So we have Amitabh Chandra. Amitabh Chandra. Okay. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. I was <coughs> slightly uh, slightly discouraged yesterday because I couldn't get it. Just to start the video. <coughs> Now this is the first time I'm doing this meditation, and this third day. Uh, I would say I was slightly disappointed in the sense that I could not compare my experience. With the experiences that some of my friend just narrated. Okay. However, uh, there is some change today. Uh, for some time, I felt there is as if some black veil was coming over my forehead, and some people were chin. That was a very short time. And second experience, I found that as if my heart has gone to my brain and it is pumping in the brain. Except for these, most of the time, actually, my thoughts were drifting. Uh, but i can assure you that uh, i will try and try and try keep on practicing this till i get some experiences which some of my friends have said so thank you for this so amitabh ji one side you say don't you didn't have experience another side you talked about two experiences number one yeah right the thing is uh, we don't have to try for any experience i want to say having no experience is an experience it is not necessary that we experience something physically right now what's important is that in meditation don't we don't try for any experience at all and we sit down and then we enjoy it as a process like that walking or that cooking right because when we understand it we are consuming this great process and it is going to have its benefits in our rest of the life right, right. in a wakeful life so um, and however having said that you said my heart went into the brain and then did something right whatever that is <laughs> so so you are experiencing but my my suggestion is to don't look for any such experience at all hmm. don't make it predictable that's what i'm trying to say yeah. when i see the word predictability we are looking for something because that's when it predict predictability is based on a past record past and we don't make it become zero every day sit down and meditate and say, today is my first day of however you take today whatever that you you said hey i was thinking a lot see if there is something that can change it tomorrow is it the posture 
is it that experience expectation if you're thinking then stop that right do something different tomorrow when you're sitting for the meditation but where there's zero expectation is to make yourself comfortable right and and then no expectation and then start enjoying the process things will happen right one one and, short question yes i was going through the book where it said that for every year of your age you have to meditate for one hour now for senior citizens like me it means that you have to meditate for more than one hour at a stretch is it possible to break down because what i noticed that while i was trying to meditate sometimes i will find that you know i am developing cramps in my feet so i have to move a bit here and there or something i feel that some insect or something is sitting on my shoulder i have to uh, yeah yeah no, no, so, away. so so that's a guidance per minute one year per minute is a guidance yes you can break it into multiple meditations so we're doing one in the morning with us together 45 minutes and then later in the evening you can do slowly you practice it when you said my feet are getting ache so if you sit on a chair that's not a problem in many cases and you can change your posture during meditation by the way okay it is not necessary that you hold on to that like i do it yeah. all the time when i'm sitting on the floor all the time i stretch my legs every 20 minutes i can pull them back stretch my legs okay. pull them back because mm-hmm. after 21 years i still have the same challenge it's it's like that yeah very, okay. no restriction of what you do not do in meditation right so if you practice for a few days then easily many many are able to go into a longer than longer session just like that but you can break sure. it you sure, can break sure. it not a problem okay thank you very good thank you <laughs> next one with you yeah rupa and you can say hello sir hi this is the first time i'm ever trying uh, meditation in my life and this is like my third day and i'm like you know last two days i was like always getting those thoughts will i be able to can you go to the hello? next one yes hello we are losing ma'am i think your voice is not clear uh good morning sir namaskar namaste it'll be great uh, to see you sir ha uh, uh, pranam yes uh, since last uh, i i i initially decided that i will take uh, from first day only the morning sessions but my first day experience was so good that i started having both the sessions morning and evening mm, whatever you are seeing and whatever i am experiencing uh, i am slightly unable to put it in the words in a mm, in a garnish manner but i am feeling something like as if i am being embraced with uh, emptiness all around you know and it is something joyous that's only i can say in my limited uh, ex- uh, field of expression as far as this field is concerned uh, i do uh, listen very intently be- um, before meditation whatever you are trying to say or convey a lot do not go so i will now go Uh, today it has been uh, conveyed in the chat that on youtube these sessions are available so i intend to go and repeat the same to to get engrossed slightly uh, more in what you intend to give us um, because uh, there is a gap between what you are giving and what i am experiencing so and your intention is that i should come near there and that is what i am trying to do and extremely thank you sir extremely thank you mm, it's beautiful that's it i can say more than that wonderful uh, janesh is so good to hear when we don't have words to express that means that we're exp- experiencing something unlimited something because i we, don't know we can't experience we can't express them because we're experiencing unlimited and so that unknown and that's why only, you don't know how to express only it. thing i uh, only thing i know is that my emotions are uh, running haywire and let's see i will just practice practice and practice that's it yes great wonderful so meditation is definitely is definitely reprogramming our subconscious where all the deeper incidents records of the past beliefs of joyous non joyous everything is there it's reprogramming 
them and so some will silently go away but some will surface up where you want to express a lot of joy a lot of uh, uh, emotion embracement in the past but then you couldn't because of circumstances then it's going to come out now or you felt a deep state of sorrow or suffering but then you couldn't express it it's going to come out now because our life was full of suppression of emotions and we've been, as a male have been always told don't cry don't express it don't become vulnerable even today in offices men do not even want to say anything because they feel they're vulnerable and the people are going to judge and companies are going to judge and they're not probably going to have a career or opportunity True. and a meditation is helping us reprogram making us become lighter and lighter and lighter by bringing it out and we become lighter jesus christ said you have to enter the kingdom to, to enter the kingdom of god you have to become a child again become a child again to enter the kingdom of god kingdom of god is nothing but that emptiness, that energy and touching our divine self. And child, what is a child? A child is someone who is free, totally free, totally liberated, totally free to do anything. So we all are becoming that child and we are free. So thank you so much, Janeshi. It's wonderful. But the message there is for everything, like this experience, right? Now we all will experience and then many, many I shouldn't say will experience, okay. Some may experience, I'm ready for the words, right? May experience, may not experience, but when you experience that emotion, enjoy it. It is unpleasant, go through it. If it's joyful, extend it, right? So be with it, don't have to break it because it is not bound to happen. And uh, sir, yes. when, when my emotions are running haywire, the unique thing is I'm not feeling sad, nor I'm feeling happy. Um, uh, uh, it is simply uh, like something is getting washed away. That's it. Yeah, that's now, what is happening. Uh, uh, in the emptiness, I try to search uh, yesterday in evening session. I try to search that what it is, you know. I mean, I am I feeling pain or am I feeling happiness? Or anything? There was no feeling. Uh, only it was uh, as if something has cracked up. That's it. Yeah. All right. That's great. No, that's how it happens. So we, we, there are infinite experiences, so we do not interpret because sometimes it is a feeling, sometimes there's no feeling, but that's fine. All right. All we know that we experience emotion. I'm I'm yeah. absolutely obliged to know you and uh, have this experience. I think I'm I'm lucky to uh, to come across this at this stage of my life, and and at least now I am slightly more uh, delighted to have light. Wonderful, Janashi. We're going to have a, a. There is a book called "I Decide to Live for 120 Years." So that means there is a third or second inning, whatever inning that you want to call in your life is going to be that. So that we all want to be that way. And there are people in some of the islands, in Japan, in Costa Rica, in, uh, 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 in uh, Hawaiian islands, where one in three persons are living beyond 90 years and then many more even being beyond 100 years. And they are living with a purpose and it's called Ikigai. Read that book, yes, Ikigai, I, the Japanese yes. secret long life. Yes. That's it. We have so much to do, so much we can do. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Sweta Kotagiri, so I'm going to come to you. Just hold on. So, friends, we, we're always learning some science. We just have two more classes, right? Now, those who are leaving, for whatever reason, leaving, even though it came within a half an hour to two hours. So, let's go and understand a little bit of science more in terms of how meditation is giving that second life or third life for many of us. If we thought that our brain is slowly, slowly going away, the memory power is going away, the dementia, the Parkinson's, that anxieties, that because I don't have good memory power, then you can rest your, all your fears about it, you know, completely rest them. Because meditation, the moment you have meditation, it's all coming back slowly. It's all coming back, it is re-enthusiasing ourselves. I'm going to, of course, uh, have a good friend Chandra Madali speak about his experience maybe tomorrow. Right? Is not only giving health, but absolutely is increasing our memory capacities so significantly that we start finding life more. We start increasing the purpose, the passion for life more. We want to feel like living the life again. Because why? When our memory is losing, then generally we just want to withdraw ourselves because you don't know, right? And you suddenly can't even recognize people. And then you can't participate actually in a discussion. Because the memory power is not there, you feel like you know, you're just left out. And then the things that you're starting up anywhere, a lot of times are intelligent quotient, 
is there to help us succeed in material world, that intelligent quotient. And when that is diminishing, that's not adequately supported, and then we feel that, no, we cannot have a successful life. But meditation is reversing. We are, through meditation, gaining seven memory powers. Seven memory powers, not one, not two, but seven. You know, let me put this slide to see if I can share this. Okay, our animation did not work. Okay, storing power, access power, concentration power, reading, learning, creating, thought power. Right? All right, okay. The storing power and access power are like the two things that we call normally memory power. The recall ability. When we say, okay, I don't have good memory, it's combined between these two. Storing and access. All right? The storing is how efficiently you're storing. Access, how quickly you're able to access the right time, just in time access, right? Both are related. You know, our spouses have a great ability to pack a lot of things at your wardrobe, isn't it? You have a small wardrobe, but you can pack a lot of things in a very meticulous, systematic way so that you can pull that out when you need it. Organize it very efficiently. You go into the kitchen cabinets and a small cabinet has so much stuff in there, right? You know, so beautifully organized. So that you can pick anything from anywhere, just like that instantaneously. So this is that, dear friends. Storing power and access power, you know where it is coming from? Our brain, there is an area in the second brain, limbic brain is called hippocampus. That hippocampus is a store for long-term memory. So whatever you store, you can recollect faster. The hippocampus is there. And hippocampus area is expanding. Right next to it, there is this thing called fear center. Amygdala is contracting through meditation. See the beauty of it, right? Some areas contract, which are not supporting. Some areas expand, which are supportive of the life. All by doing what? All by expanding ourselves into the consciousness, into being that infinite field, that field. We don't limit ourselves and say, I'm this limited body. You know, I'm this body and this all is my life. You open up and then start expanding yourselves by touching into the field of quantum energy, the field, becoming one with the whole self. And then, of course, in the process, you're dropping all your unwanted thought from the mind. And so this hippocampus is expanding. And so you have a tremendous and slowly, slowly your storing and access power improving. Concentration power, the second one, and the reading power, learning power, these three come from the cognitive brain. So let me see if there should be a uh, picture. So I'll keep talking about the brain. So if there is a way, I can show that first. Uh, what do you got? Ah, okay, yeah, let's see this picture. Right? So I understand this a little bit. So our brain, there are three areas of the brain, right? In this, I don't know the left side. The three areas of brain. So this top one, this color is called the neocortex, the frontal cortex, neocortex, which is the learning brain or the thinking brain, the conscious mind, okay? Logic, abstraction, thought, reading, decision making, whole bunch of stuff is all there. It's called the, uh, it's also called the conscious mind. Okay, the frontal portion, which is basically spreading all, I don't know if you can see me also, is spreading all over this body from front to back, right? And it is a larger part of the brain. And the second brain, which is the doing brain, also the limbic brain I keep referring to, where this amygdala and then uh, hippocampus are inside that, is that yellow color area, that all of that is that um, limbic brain. Then there is a reptile brain, which is uh, what is essentially connected to the stem cell. So this purple color is stem cell from the vertebra coming up. Is that reptile brain or the survival brain, reproduction brain, survival. Your blood circulation, heart pumping, lungs expanding, contracting, cell biology operation, a bunch of stuff is happening autonomously through this brain. Okay. Conscious mind, subconscious mind, unconscious mind. There are good words here, learning, doing, being. It's also a word in quantum physics. Hopefully you get time, then we'll understand this concept. Learn, do, be tomorrow. I think I, I would definitely want to cover this concept. 
But the point is, we got these three brains. So the second brain is where this hippocampus is there, which is the seat of long-term emotion, sort of long-term memory. And this brain, the frontal brain is, is the neocortex, is where various pockets, various reasons, your concentration, your reading, your your, your decision making, cognitive, logic, creativity, all of them are right there. And Dr. Sara Laser, who is a landmark study she has done in the 2006 with a large number of people, Sara Laser. And then she found, and I'm sure you would have read, that uh, in long term meditators, long term meditators have their neural area, the frontal cortex, some of the areas are thickening. The gray matter, it's called the gray matter, where the neural cells are created, are thickening. They're becoming more and more. So more cells and then more neural circuits are uh, supported and formed. The more neural connections you have, the more learning capability you have, the more capacity of various aspects. So they found that you know the neural areas in certain areas are increasing, primarily supporting with those increases, supporting the concentration power, reading power, learning power. So these things are coming from these neural areas. The neural networks, the gray matter is thickened. So making us to become concentrative. Right now what you are with me, you are into a, a concentration, higher concentration to be listening to me. I'm going to talk about another reason why it also increases. So the neural networks are increasing in size, in uh, capacity. And so it is supporting more and more ability to learn. So when uh, it's, it's called neuroplasticity, your ability to form new circuits in the brain at will easily and whereas when you are uh, when you are with a stressful emotion where your these re the reasons are shrinking not working well because there's something called neuro glue that glue is also missing lessening and as a result oh well, guys somebody wants to draw something on the screen so as a result we do not have good learning capability because when we don't when the neural networks are becoming tighter with that glue going away. So there is there is no interest and appetite to learn things. So learning normally is lesser, but in meditation where it's increasing the neural networks and gateways, and as a result, it's increasing the learning power. Where, what is learning power? Learning power is when you read something, able to, to assimilate. If you are a manager, you're looking at it and say, hey, I want to get somebody who's got high aptitude, who can pick it up, things up, and then bring up, become a good asset to the organization. So the learning power. Meditators have this great aptitude to learn. Reading power. Meditators can read fast, you know. Why Patriji says he read 100,000 books. I read, I see him and he read like five books a day. He'll just take a book and then he goes off so quick and then picks another book and then finishes that book. Like there are so many books he can read. I'm able to increase my reading speed quite a bit. Or the period, it, it is it is multiple ways. One, and we work on that, there is a thing. He used to apparently scan even the whole dictionary and then no time. Our brain has an infinite, unlimited capacity to learn. And so you can, uh, there is something called speed reading, page reading, a lot of things are there. And a lot of them are supported through this meditation. Excellent for children, as you are listening in. A child, when goes through meditation, is an amazing, amazing capability to get everything. So the concentration, I need not tell. Only thing we knew about telling to our children, our teachers told us is concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. No one to give us a technique. And this is the technique. Just teach that meditation. If you are running a school, introduce meditation for 10 minutes a day because they're 10 year old, 12 year old. You're going to give them a beautiful life. They, didn't, they don't have to work too hard coming back and doing homework and this and that because they're just so concentrated that they can carry it. Right? So concentrate. So many students have said meditation helped them to become really a class students, right? They become so confident. Now, creative power and thought power are two things, dear friends. So creative power, meditation is synchronizing this whole brain synchronization, activating both the brains together, whole brain synchronization. Creativity is about holistic, being holistic, so uh, uh, taking things from various corners. And our both brains, left brain, right brain, come together. So meditation is helping us uh, become more holistic. And they have found that 
our right brain is a little bit more creative ability, artistic ability, and meditation is active since it's activating both the brains. Normally, when we are right-handed, when we're doing many things to the right side, there is a left brain is a lot more getting activated. Those left-handers and those using ambidextrous and uh, they're doing both hands equally well. So you have this right brain getting activated from an active perspective. But when you meditate, both brains are getting active. And so they're found in some cases, the creative side of the brain is a little bit more acting on the right side. So people have more creative, creative ability. When you have creative, then you do a lot of things differently. You start gaining new experiences. New experiences lead to new enjoyment. Then there's more interest in life. So it's really, it's all about, uh, it's all relative. Thought part dear friends is ultimately is about thoughts and feelings create reality. So do you have more energy for the thought? Because we take away 95% of unwanted thoughts, so the 5% is what has got all the thought power into it. So we, our thoughts become, thoughts are uh, basically, they go and they reach the target much fast. Energy, as a thought is energy. So heightened energy is what it become. Right? So meditation is improving all of this. And as a result, as a result, people are improving their ability to learn, live longer because they want to obviously have more in, interested in life, more and more interest in life. They're not giving up life anymore, all right? All right. So this is, what do we have next? All right, I don't think we need this. The second reason, I want to talk a little bit about the science of our brain waves. Our brain waves in, when what happens in meditation when you are, the, our brain has a wave called, and all the thoughts have a frequency. So, let's see that, where is it? Yes, here. So pay attention to this picture on the right side. And I'll come to the left side about how meditation is helping you to increase the sleep and uh, energy and sleep. Sleep is one of the core reasons of how you can improve, improve energy. So the right side picture, what you see, right? So a mind, the top, there is an, in between a line called analytical mind. So the one above analytical mind is a conscious mind, that big thing that we have seen. And then below that is unconscious, uh, subconscious, unconscious together. The analytical mind is there is stopping us from putting things into the subconscious. What is subconscious? The doing brain is the brain where when you cook and do it repeatedly, it goes there. The skill is going there. The top portion is all about knowledge. The second part is where the skill, your habit, right? Your belief, they're all there in the second part, the subconscious. When you do things, you go into that, okay? The top where the knowledge is there, but it's not extra becoming to a skill. I don't know. It's a wisdom. Experiential knowledge is wisdom. So all wisdom is stored in the subconscious. So that analytical mind is constantly stopping. Even now when I tell, is it true that meditation will increase my uh, hippocampus long-term memory? Will Parkinson dementia, will they really get helped? An analytical mind doesn't want to believe it, right? It stops, it breaks, it's a barrier to let things flow into the second side, into the inside brain. But meditation, what it is it doing? So wakeful state, that high beta, or the waves in the brain are high beta, so they're at that frequency, stressful states that is. And then right now where you are a little more uh, suggestive, you are more suggestible, so you are listening to, me. after meditation, good meditation will become more suggestible, the frequency drops into the low beta. But in meditation, we go into that wakeful relaxation, alpha. That's the state we're also going in before sleep uh, in the night as you're sleeping in. So the moment you instruct your body and say, because what is sleep and you're going in, uh, okay, no matter what it is now, I start off, okay, I give you instructing the body, okay, now I'm gonna go into the sleep, nice sleep. You're letting go. Many people don't let go, that's why they can't sleep for a long time. But meditation is taking us into that wakeful relax relaxation state, that twilight state. This is the time where you start getting solutions to the problems when you are into this initial state of relaxation. This is why when you wake up and when you are into the, in front of your mirror brushing your teeth, pay attention, don't make your mind full at that time. So pay attention of what's coming into your mind because the, our, our inside is always trying to give us solutions. 
pay attention while you're showering, while you're brushing your teeth, as opposed to keeping your mind full, and then see that you know, they're always getting some solution to what you need to do, the more priority that day. Because the consciousness is always wanting to tell us and give us uh, uh, things, but we have to relax and be, we have to be attentive to it. So we're going to the wakeful relaxation initially, and then as you practice more, more and more and more, you go into the deeper meditation states, theta. This is where you get insights. You get insights, you get discoveries, inventions. A lot of uh, people who invent, they go into this zone and then they suddenly get it. Musicians are going into this zone. They're telling that, hey, I'm going to the trance state and get all that kind of stuff. Artists say that, you know, they're going to a very trance state and then they drop beautiful stuff because they're going into these deep states of theta state. They're dropping themselves into the states. Sportsmen, you know, if you study some of the sportsmen, when they're at high pressure, you know what they're doing? They're actually dropping themselves into this um, alpha theta states and they're not going into the high stressful state. That's why the world-class sportsmen like Eugene Bolt and some of them, when they measured their brains, they're finding themselves to be dropping into the lower states, something that's working for them. And of course, many of them are adopting to meditation. If you go into the theta state, you're not under pressure, not buckling into the pressure, compared to pressure. Instead, you are actually being more insightful and saying, what should I do now? You know, how can I win this thing, right? So you are getting insightful thing. And of course, your body is working so functionally well because you're not uh, 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 under stress. So theta state. And then as you go deeper into meditation, you go into the deep sleep state, REM sleep, where body is healing. Significant amount of healing can happen in that state. And there is meditation consciously aware. So there is a deep healing happening Why people are walking up from their wheelchairs and then walking after a few days of meditation. Or some people who are paralytic, paralytic forever, for 10 years, 15 years, and then come out of the paralysis and walking, right? Many of them are not related to, uh, some diseases are not related to stress, but they are there, and then they're able to solve that side, right? So the, the thing is that meditation is helping us go into those states, and what is sleep? So sleep is improved because on our left side you might have read. One, reduced stressor, reduced cortisol. The cortisol keeps us very awake because it's protecting the body, right? If you're stressful, there's a lot of cortisol, and then it is pumping more blood actively into the body. So as a result, you're being more awake. So you got to lessen the cortisol. And then I told about this melatonin chemical in pineal gland, which is here, right, in the, uh, uh, somewhere in this area, right, in the middle, in the center. And uh, lower states of uh, this thought frequencies. There are three reasons, dear friends. We go into, we get a very nice sleep, very good sleep. I sleep gained... Now I sleep consistently four to five hours. Gone are the days where I seek and desire for eight hours of sleep. Neither do I feel the necessity. And what is the need for it? And essentially, if you are a busy executive, or if you are somebody who wants to do a lot of service, or otherwise you want to spend a lot of time with children, whatever, or you want to read more, so you need more time, so you get that time. So as you're practicing meditation, if you are becoming awake in the middle of the night and fresh, don't force yourself to sleep. It is common. You don't need more sleep. But we've been told, I have to sleep. So don't force yourself to sleep because then you are just wasting an important thing. And because what you seek is seeking you. So when you are meditating and you have a serious interest to read, for example, then that is a great time to read. So you are being awakened. 2002 and three and four that time, when I was in the nation, two days of practice. I used to, several times, some forces like, hitting my bed, like I woke up and I asked Vani what, a couple of times, what happened? Are you putting, hitting my bed? I was hearing these sounds. Then I was taking under the bed if somebody is there hitting the bed. But that's kind of the sounds I was hearing then I realized, okay, I'm oversleeping and then it is pushing me to come wake up and then do some reading. So I, I did a lot of practice, I'm happy. I read at least 5,000 books and then reading more and more. So we have to read more to support in the charity program our system, we gotta read more. We'll talk about some more in terms of how our brain is learning and then why reading is so important. Dear friends, tomorrow, we, you know, five days, as much as possible we'd like to cover, all right? With that, we've got a couple of minutes. I'd like to see Sri Marni. Can you listen to your experience? Sri Marni is our team facilitator for Mandakini, not Mandakini, uh, uh, Mahananda. Mahananda, sir. Yes. yes, please go ahead. 
Namaste, everyone. Uh, thank two you minutes. for two to three minutes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. Uh, and as always, Chandrasir's are uh, Chandrasir's sessions are amazing, inspiring, and just. I just don't want to ever miss any of these sessions. Uh, so I, I started meditating around seven years ago when I was going through a, quite an internal turmoil. Uh, I just had my first child. Uh, and uh, yeah, being of, uh, a new mother and working full time, there were a few challenges which I didn't know how to cope and it just brought me into a lot of internal turmoil. And that's the point when I came across this Anapanasati meditation. And all I can say is, my life has been just, I feel I've been reborn since uh, taking this part. It's just uh, every day is blissful. Living in the present moment is uh, something that ha that comes naturally now. I used to previously look for happiness in the external world, like maybe if I get this house, I'll be happy. If I get this piece of jewelry, I'll be happy. Uh, and that, that used to happen, but it used to be a very momentary happiness and it wouldn't live long. Uh, but after this path, every day is joyous. I don't have to look for any external dependencies to make me happy or be fulfilled. It's just there. It's just being aware that I am, I am abundance of happiness. And that's been the most transformational shift for me. And, and the journey has been magical. Like I used to work really, I work in the corporate sector. I used to work really hard to get to a point. But when I have surrendered to the universe, things have started coming to me automatically. It's, it's just magical. Things that I never asked for have come automatically to me. And that's been the best uh, role or the best place I could be at that moment of time. It's, it's just been a magical journey since and it continues to be. And also the way I bring up my kids, uh, I used to be a very stressful mother. Like they used to cry. I used to feel that was my fault. I'm not taking care of them well. But it's just been very, uh, what do I say, the motherhood is just so much more enjoyable now. Um, I do, I do shout at my kids, but it's, it's reduced a lot now. Uh, I feel I'm much more calmer when dealing with the, them and their tantrums and all. So yeah, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to know you all as well as part of this journey. I'm looking forward to uh, knowing everyone more. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Shri. This uh, great experience. I know you've uh, uh, had even during pregnancy. I think you learned meditation. So you had good experiences at some point. Yes, sir. And yeah. Certainly people can talk to you if anybody is carrying and then wanting to know more about. Oh, definitely. Raising younger children, infants and all of that. All right. So dear friends, thank you so much for your time. And uh, Kathkin, sir, if you're there, if you'd like to have any closing comment, I don't want to disturb you. I come back. Yes, sir. I come back to you. Very good. I heard most of it, particularly the experience of Sri and amazing. More and more of uh, positive developments. I'm very happy. Congratulations to you. Thank Great. you, sir. You are evolving every day. <laughs> With every session, I find your performance also a bit better. Apart from the three with you for how long? Seven years, you said? Three. So, yeah, I started meditating seven years ago. So. Seven years ago. Very good. Where did you? So I live in, uh, in the UK, in a, uh, near Birmingham. Okay, wonderful. Happy. How old are the children? Uh, my kids are, uh, the younger one is six and the older one is nine. Good, I'm happy you are enjoying motherhood. That we also meditate in health, we didn't know that. It's, and that shift, meditation brought that shift, sir. Otherwise, I used to be very stressful. If they wouldn't eat or not sleep, I used to blame myself for that. But I just, I've just gone with the flow and it's just magical. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. It all depends on our attitude, you know. And uh, so one more aspect of uh, benefit of meditation I learned from you today. Congratulations to you. Keep it up. God bless you. Thank you, Chandra. I want to hear from any other person there. 
Yes, sir. So we we are hearing. We had uh, we heard from some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, not the other computer, but we use it with you. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Um, at twelve thirty. So we'll meet back tomorrow again at ten thirty. So that's the fourth day. And um, we, I am posting that newsletter. So even though they are uh, referring, when you go to the Facebook, they refer to the last 40 day program, but they are all packed with information. I promise to do that every day for the next 40 days. So stay with it, ignore that header that may be there, but the content is all. So while the newsletter does not reflect what I'm speaking today, what I'm speaking today will be there in the YouTube channel. So yesterday's they posted, so you can listen to the class back again. Today's they'll post today and the first day I think we are a little backlog so it'll go also go up onto the YouTube. So subscribe to that and be there. So for today's class you can listen to that video but otherwise the newsletter will go in a systematic manner for the next 40 days covering a topic every week and then so that's our plan to cover. And, uh, um, and, and then stay with it and then with your facilitators as much time you can open up and then speak and then exchange. I feel that's the maximum benefit one can get out of it. Right. Thank you all. And then wonderful to have you.